The police department's first quarter crime report is showing that crime is up in Durham. Chief C.J. Davis presented the report to the city council during its May 6th meeting. It shows that part one violent crime, which includes homicide, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault, was up by 13% with an increase in all categories. Part one property crime, which includes burglary, larceny, and motor vehicle theft, increased by 17%. The good news there is that burglaries dropped to a 10-year first quarter low. As a result of all those numbers, Part 1 index crime, which is property and violent crime combined, was up by 16%. Larcenies were mostly to blame for that, with a 61% increase during the first quarter. The department also saw some organizational changes during the first quarter. They were made for enhanced efficiency and to create a more equitable distribution of the administrative workload. For more information on the crime report, visit DurhamPolice.com. Durham is joining a national program to lessen the negative impact municipal fines and fees have on residents. The National League of Cities has selected Durham to participate in its Cities Addressing Fines and Fees Equitably initiative. The program provides grants and technical assistance to six cities to help them assess and reform their use of local fines and fees and develop equitable collections strategies. The organization says cities frequently miss key opportunities since residents who are unable to pay fines and fees often struggle with other debt and financial burdens. The initiative will help Durham implement innovative financial empowerment approaches to help residents who are in debt to the city as a result of municipal fines and fees. City staff is now working to determine which ones are the largest sources of revenue and will begin their analysis there. For more information, visit NLC.org. Students serving on the 2018-2019 Durham Youth Commission are getting a chance to learn how to be both leaders and servants for their community. The commission connects the city's young people to local government, leadership development, and advocacy opportunities. It's made up of 25 high school aged youth in grades 9 through 12 who serve a one-year term. This year, members got to take part in workshops and conferences that focused on racial equity, career development, financial literacy, and team building. They also collaborated with other youth councils to allocate over $6,000 to community organizations that requested funding. In addition, they connected with the city's elected officials and helped to facilitate an event where youth were invited to submit ideas for Durham's participatory budgeting process. For more information on how young people can get involved with the Durham Youth Commission, visit DurhamNC.gov 1350. If you're a Durham City resident, you're encouraged to vote this month on the participatory budgeting projects that you want to see in your community. Participatory budgeting is a democratic process that lets residents have a direct say in how a portion of their tax dollars will be spent. In Durham's case, we have a total of $2.4 million to spend, which means there's $800,000 designated for one-time projects in each of the three city council wards. Over 500 ideas were submitted by residents, and those ideas were then narrowed to over 40 projects. Examples of the projects include bus shelters, accessible playground equipment, street trees, and sidewalks. To vote, you must be 13 years of age or older, and you must be a Durham City resident or a student. When you vote, you'll be asked to rank 10 of the projects for your ward in order of priority. You can vote online through May 31st at pbdurham.org, at a set voting site, or at a pop-up voting site. To learn more about these voting options, visit pbdurham.org or follow at pbdurhamnc on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Registration is underway for organizations and neighborhoods wanting to participate in Durham's National Night Out. This year's event will be held on August 6th. That's when residents are asked to lock their doors, turn on outside lights, and spend the evening outside with neighbors, law enforcement, and public safety partners. National Night Out is held each year to promote involvement in crime prevention activities, police and community partnerships, and neighborhood unity. The events that are usually held include block parties, cookouts, parades, flashlight walks, contests, and youth activities. Neighborhoods, organizations, and businesses are encouraged to support the celebration by organizing or sponsoring an event. The deadline to register to do that is July 12th. The National Association of Town Watch organizes the observance. It expects that this year's event will involve more than 16,000 communities nationwide. To find out more or to register, go to DurhamPolice.com.